Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Power Plant System Engineering Module 1 Review of Basic Thermodynamics. So, in the first lecture, we have given the fundamental concepts of thermodynamics, system surrounding first law, steady flow devices and so on. Now, in this, uh, in this lecture and continuing the, our discussion further, uh, we will also move on to some other fundamental topics like uh, which are going to be used for our subsequent modules. So, in this lecture, we will touch upon uh, the topics that is uh, second law of thermodynamics and it also uh, talk about Carnot cycle that gives the concept of heat engine. Then second law of thermodynamics also gives the introduces another thermodynamic property that is entropy and this entropy has a definite relationship with respect to irreversible uh, uh, nature of the uh, of a system. So, to quantify the irreversibility then you will define the topics that is entropy and what will ha again happen if the process is reversible, what will happen to this entropy. So, this concept will be discussed here and again coming back to the application sides, we will uh, touch upon some fundamental aspects of pure substance that is properties of pure substance. This is mainly required because uh, in our subsequent model we will be talking about steam power systems where we will be frequently using water as a working fluid for and, uh, and in a steam power systems and it is continuously changes its phase from liquid to superheated regions. So, to address those uh, concepts, uh, we will briefly discuss some introduction topics of pure substances. Then in the last uh, segment, we will also talk about some other aspects of second law that is exergy, which is nothing but the work potential of any form of energy. And to quantify exergy, we also need to define an efficiency called as second law efficiency. So, these are the gross uh, outline of this lecture. Now, let us move on to the our main uh, the first topics that is second law of thermodynamics. So, prior to this we have introduced the first law which is nothing but the conservation of energy and with thermodynamic viewpoint we say that energy is available either in the form of work or heat. But then issue is that which has higher quality. So, that is not clear in the first law, but first law of thermodynamics rightly do the all kinds of energy auditings uh, like energy convert energy can be converted to in any other forms, but it does not talk about which is of higher quality and which is of lower quality. So, for that uh, it introduces the concepts of energy transfer either in work mode or heat mode. But again it was found that uh, when uh, energy conversion takes place from work to heat, it is found that uh, we can have a, uh, a complete com conversion of uh, um, energy from work form to heat. But reverse was not supposed to be true because that means heat can be considered as a low grade energy and so what work can be considered as a uh, high grade energy. But this kind of statement does not appear in the first law of thermodynamics. So, for that we introduce the topic uh, second law that means when the heat is to be converted to work and, and complete work conversion is not possible then where is the rest amount of work that is going. So, and uh, some cases it is a unavailable energy and some cases uh, if at all has to be work it has to be converted how much uh, what is the upper limit of this conversions. So, all kinds of answers uh, that we are going to get uh, in the second law. So, there are two concepts here in the second law. First thing is that we are going to introduce a Carnot cycle which gives the concept of heat engines. That means, modality of harnessing or extracting work potential from heat or work from the heat, heat source. And second aspect that we are going to talk about is a thermodynamic property entropy to quantify the unaccounted energy where it goes. So, 
uh, and this also de is defined through a term what we call as irreversibility. And another additional topic that we are going to concern about this is that exergy. So, in the first law we talked about work uh, energy is available in various forms. So, mainly kinetic energy, it can be a potential energy, it can be a chemical energy, it can be heat energy. So, but work potential of each form of energy is different. Work potential means what is its maximum potential of amount that work that can be extracted from these forms of energy. So, that is termed through a term called exergy. Now, the when you define this exergy, we have to bring the system and surrounding into together. Then only we can say that uh, what is the work potential. So, these are the some of the topics that we are going to touch upon in this lecture. Now, coming back to the uh, second law of thermodynamics, it is unanimously accepted by two fundamental st statements that is one is Kelvin Planck statement, other is the Clausius statement and uh, they are available, the statements are available as they appear in most of the almost same in all the books, fundamental books. So, I uh, will read this those statements and in fact, these are the negative statements of second law and of course, violation of uh, there are two statements basically, one is Kelvin Planck statement, other is Clausius statements and both are negative form, but violation of one statement also violates the other. So, when you say Kelvin Planck statement, it talks about a um, cycle which, uh, which operates in an engine called as heat engine. Uh, so, if it says that it is impossible to construct a device which will operate in a cycle and produce no effect other than rising a weight and exchange heat with a single reservoir. That means, while um, when we propose, propose a heat engines and it takes uh, energy as input from this uh, heat source and without rejecting it to any kind of uh, to rejecting it from this heat engine, it uh, work cannot be extracted. So, here the there are ta some terms the when you say operate in a cycle means uh, it has to operate in a continuous manner. So, it is not like instantaneous, it is a continuously operating. And when you say rising of weight, which means it is doing work, because by definition we say work is viewed that in some form we can raise this weight. Then we can think of exchange of heat in a single reservoir, which means that uh, only heat is added, there is no heat rejections. So, this is possible only in the first law with, with 100 percent thermal efficiency, but this is not true with respect to second law. The second statement that talks about that when we, it is impossible to construct a device that operate in a cycle and produces no effect other than the transfer of heat from cooler to hotter body. That means, without giving any work input to a device, we cannot transfer heat from a low temperatures reservoir. So, this is the uh, this, this concept is mainly meant for refrigerator. So, both uh, this particular figure shows that violation of one statement will also lead to the violation of other. The next topic that is going to introduce for the heat engine is the Carnot cycle, because that is the Carnot cycle which was essentially pro proposed uh, uh, for second law and uh, it only tells that the modality or method or mechanism in which work can be extracted from a heat source. So, this particular figure shows that we have a high temperature reservoir source which is available at temperature T h and the we have a low temperature reservoir which is available at T l and our main objective is to produce um, is to take this uh, heat from the high temperature reservoir and produce work. So, for that we need to devise a uh, uh, we need to have a uh, cyclic device that is called as heat engines. So, this heat engine operates with a working fluid that continuously takes heat from the high temperature source reservoir and it also continuously rejects heat to the uh, sink. So, through this process we can do this energy auditing or first law analysis which will give you the net work output. So, this is exactly what it we do in all kinds of uh, power plants, IC engines, all these devices. 
So, this cyclic manner of operation which means that uh, in order to uh, extract uh, work from a heat source, we must operate a cyclic device. So, this is the uh, general statement for a heat engines, but when you put uh, with respect to uh, the efficiency viewpoint, because the Carnot cycle also says that uh, what will be the maximum efficiency for this heat engines. So, to do that what analysis it was proposed that a hypothetical cycle, the Carnot cycle it was proposed that if you want to operate that cyclic device for how it should work. So, that uh, cyclic device uh, should operate in four processes which are shown in this pressure volume and temperature entropy diagrams. So, the first one is reversible adiabatic compressions. So, when you say compression process that means we are giving work in, so that is a work input in this compression. So, this when this is a adiabatic uh, process from 1 to 2. Correspondingly, since it is a reversible adiabatic, so entropy remains constant, so it is a vertical line shown in the temperature entropy diagram. Then second one is reversible isothermal heat addition process. So, isothermal heat addition that is process 2 to 3 where heat is getting added which is a QA and third one is that is 2 3 is QA heat addition. Third one is reversible adiabatic expansion. So, its expansion means it is a power producing device that means W out. So, essentially this W net that was proposed in the Carnot cycle is nothing but W out minus W in. So, this is the net work that means cyclic device that is going to produce and last one is the reversible adiabatic heat rejections. So, uh, cycle will be completed only the state of the system goes from 4 to 1. So, for turn to complete the cycle some heat must be rejected that is Q r. Now, without this heat rejection, so this is nothing but this heat comes from the high temperature source that is T h and heat is getting rejected to the low temperature sink which is maintained at T l and through this process we are getting W net work output. So, this is how the cyclic device should operate and for that reasons uh, we can uh, subsequently we can say that heat additions can be heat added can be uh, expressed by uh, multiplying this entropy change that is S 3 minus S 2 into T h heat rejected also can be found out. So, ultimately uh, it leads to the fact that what will be the net work output and what is the thermal efficiency of this heat engines. And with respect to Carnot cycle we have this ratio that is Q A by T h is equal to Q rejected by T L. So, this ratio holds good and based on that we can have this cyclic efficiency that can be defined. So, this uh, talks about a concept that if an engine has to operate between a high temperature source T H and T L this will be the maximum possible efficiency. Now, one more important point here that to be noted is that if you are if you say hot temperature source is T H and that T 2 that is that he that that cyclic device operates that means here T H is equal to T 2 and that is equal to also T 3 and here also T L is equal to T 1 and that is equal to T 4. This is the assumption that Carnot cycle makes and that assumption is only true when the processes are, are reversible in nature. Then uh, moving further we are now going to uh, define another term which is entropy and that comes by virtue of the fact that complete conversion of uh, heat to work is not possible then where does this heat goes. So, we introduce some situations where we cannot have complete conversion con conversions. So, you need to define some kind of irreversible nature of the process and that is called a degree of irreversibility and that can be either 
external to the cyclic device or internal within the internal um, components of the cyclic device. So, uh, this irreversibility can be classified as external or internal. And the external irreversibility occurs for mainly regions by heat transfer because whenever there is a temperature difference then only heat transfer is possible it will be possible and due to this heat transfer heat reversibility is introduced and the friction in the machines this also a kind of irreversible nature. Another kind of things is that mixing process throttling process because cyclic device requires some kind of uh, valves regulators. So, they are uh, for which the we need to have a uh, thermodynamic um, parameters that needs to be specified. So, that is going to change. So, with respect to thermodynamic viewpoint main sources of irreversibilities are friction, heat transfer, throttling and mixings. So, this is a particular case where we say diesel cycle and since it is a cyclic device we are going to say that we are going to say that we can um, in which we can put the location of the state points that normally defines a thermodynamic processes and, uh, and a working fluid can be part of the cycles which continuously takes heat and also rejects heats. Side by side it produces work output and such and this particular is, is cycle is a diesel cycle which is a uh, fundamental uh, air standard cycle uh, for a diesel engine. Then moving further to quantify the requirement of nature of irreversibility or degree of irreversibility, we are now going to define the term entropy which is very common which we have been using frequently, but the main significance of this term entropy is that this is something like analogous to a non flow reversible work because when you say reversible work with respect to first law this delta w that is work transfer can be considered as a pdv form work that means by when you say rising mass so that is we can put uh, the integral form that is pressure times change in the volume when you integrate it and that is that you term it as a non flow reversible work, but that was introduced in the first law. Now, when you define the term heat because heat is the main culprit or main parameter that is going to be addressed in the second law. Now, if through how in the similar fashion or similar analogous man manner how do you define the reversible heat. So, for that reasons we introduce a diagram called as and temperature entropy diagrams that will also tells about the same thing like a delta q which is the integral of T d s. So, which other way means that area under P b diagram represents non flow reversible work and area under the T s diagrams represents non flow reversible heat. So, uh, and for an isentropic process obviously, it is a reversible adiabatic. So, delta q is 0. So, T d s becomes 0. So, that means entropy remains constant. So, a reversible adiabatic process happens to be a isentropic process. Then moving further there are some other um, philosophical thought of entropy process since it quantifies the irreversibility which means that higher is the increase higher is the increase in the entropy there will be greater irreversibility. So, main parameters for example, in a uh, in a uh, reversible adiabatic turbine uh, the maximum work is produced whereas, when you say irreversibility turbine work gets reduced. So, in a reversible case if a compressor consumes a least work when the th processes are uh, uh, reversible adiabatic. But whereas, when there is a irreversibility the work input will be more. So, this is how the irreversibility becomes irreversibility parameter gets quantified through the term that is entropy. Another significance point that I need to emphasize that entropy is a measure of unavailable energy that means, this energy cannot be possible for utilization which means entropy is a disorderness of the systems 
of course, we can that is a law of entropy which says that entropy of universe continuously increases and one point of time entropy will reach at its maximum. Now, when we say entropy it means of uh, is at maximum which means all matters we, all the matters will have same temperatures. So, when there is a, all the matters have same temperature it is not possible for any extraction. So, that is a hypothetical situations you will have all availability will be lost all sources of energy will be lost and that point human life will go to a halt. So, that is a cyclo uh, philosophical thought process of entropy, but that is not a part of our discussions. Our main part is that entropy is a measure of irreversibility and while you are looking at work extractions from a heat source. So, uh, this is another example that we commonly come across expansion of a gas compression of a gas. So, when you say expansion of a gas, gas goes from high, high pressure to low pressures. So, the uh, thermodynamic process that goes uh, um, with respect to second law uh, uh, fundamentally we call this an isentropic process that is 1 to s and when you say compression it is the reverse case that means process goes from 1 to 2 s here in the expansion process process goes from 1 to 2 s in a reverse manner. Now, if the process is non isentropic we define the terms called as isentropic efficiency for, uh, for work producing device and work consuming device. So, accordingly they are defined in terms of actual enthalpy change for an irreversible process and if, uh, if we say H is equal to C, C p times T. So, this was defined by first law enthalpy C p times T for ideal gas then enthalpy term reduces to temperatures. So, this is about the turbines and compressors, but when you talk about pumps normally pumps uh, do not uh, have because pumps have uh, handles incompressible liquids and change in the temperature is quite insignificant for that reasons the pump uh, process or pump work is defined by this uh, uh, v times delta p and for and and we introduce the pump efficiency eta p. So, this is also similar analogous terms when you define uh, efficiency of a pump uh, because pump handles incompressible liquids and change of temperature is insignificant for them. Now, another topic that we are going to touch upon is the pure substance. So, pure substance is a very vital analysis because for all substances we are going to represent them in thermodynamic coordinates like pressure volume, temperature entropy, uh, pressure temperatures, different diagrams that can be drawn with thermodynamic viewpoints and substances that are treated as mainly pure substance which we can think that they are water, nitrogen, helium, carbon dioxide. So, of all gases or whatever substance we say it is a pure substance for them there are some characteristics parameters or behavior that do exist either they are available in data form or they are available in equation forms or they are available in graphical forms. So, this is what we that we call as a uh, properties of pure substance. Now, ideally speaking when you say pure substance there are three phase principle one is solid, liquid and gas. So, and among them there is a change when when the substance changes its phase uh, state uh, we can go from solid to liquid phase liquid to gas phase of course gas to solid solid to gas multiple number of ways substance can change its phase now, when there is a change in the phase that means when we are going from liquid domain to gas domains it passes through a phase change process and during this phase change process whatever heat either it is consumed or it is liberated um, extracted or comes out is known as latent heat. So, accordingly we define latent heat of freezings, latent heat of fusions and of course, we can think of latent heat of vaporizations. So, these terms are associated uh, with uh, substance when it goes from the change of phase 
Another point that we are going to have is that during a phase change processes, pressure and temperatures, pressure temperatures are dependent properties. That means uh, either one of the parameter is sufficient to define the states because during the phase change process, the uh, when there is a pressure change, the temp corresponding saturation temperature is also going to change. How we are going to look upon it. So, the first thing that we look at uh, when do like deal with the property of uh, pure substance, one is dryness fraction or quality which was uh, it is known that uh, when you think a two phase systems that means a liquid plus vapor in a containers. So, there are two parts one is uh, we can divide it in two parts one is uh, saturated vapor and saturated liquid and they can be represented in pressure volume diagrams through this process. Now, when you when we have this pressure volume diagrams, we can see it said there is a dome and within the dome we have liquid plus vapor and one line that goes uh, like from uh, uh, as there is a peak point which is called as critical point. So, left hand side of the critical point that line we call this as a saturated liquid line and right hand side of this will subsip critical point we call it as a saturated vapor line. So, if you have a mixture of these two and at a given temperatures or pressures we can fix its state as this saturated liquid or saturated vapor and any other intermediate parameters and each one will have its own specific volume and uh, any other parameter which is uh, give, given within the dome that is called a liquid vapor mixture to define the states we require a term called as quality or dryness fractions and that is defined as uh, x which is nothing but ratio of mass of vapor to the mass of uh, total mass. So, accordingly and this equation can be framed and once we know these dryness fractions whatever properties are associated with that location at that state, uh, we can find its average internal energy enthalpy within this liquid vapor region. Then we have this saturation uh, curve that means, uh, if you look at uh, the change of state that means, in the look at this figure temperature volume diagram, a substance may be it is let us say pure substance is water it is at initial state 1 and that initial state which is at 20 degree centigrade and if you keep uh, add heat. So, which means that temperature is continuously increasing to 0.2. So, when you are increasing temperature through this process there is a uh, uh, temperature change. So, whatever temperature uh, heat that gets added we call this as a sensible heat then from 2 to 3 already it is at 100 degree centigrade. So, it is going to change its phase. So, 2 is the saturated liquid stage. So, when sub, sub further heat is added the point uh, 2 moves to point 4 that is saturated vapor state and uh, further heat addition will go to state 5 which is called as a superheated regions. So, any other point which is 3 that is nothing but liquid plus vapor regions and beyond point 5 we will say superheated regions. And this curve is drawn at one uh, particular pressure. So, similar uh, similar uh, way we can draw infinite number of curves and locus of the curves goes in this manner and we call this as a dome and that dome consists of a peak point which is the critical point that means, higher you go to towards the critical point we do not have uh, do not have two distinct points saturated liquid and vapor they try to merge together at a point that is called as a critical point. Now, this is also plot for uh, pressure and volume. Other point is that when you take uh, this uh, for each pressure there is a saturation temperatures. So, a curve that can be plotted uh, corresponding to saturated pressure and saturated temperatures and that goes in this manner. So, higher is the saturation temperature higher will be the also saturation pressure. So, for water the critical points are defined as 22 mega Pascal 374.14 uh, degree centigrade 0 0.003155 meter cube per kg. 
Then moving further the we also are going to introduce the term which is called as a phase diagrams. So, phase means solid liquid gas that are three different phase, but uh, um, ideally speaking solid can change its state to liquid and liquid to vapor. So, this is the normal uh, process that we go. So, solid if you want to go to vapor it has to melt then after melting it will vaporize. So, it will go to vapor regions. Now, if the solid also can go to vapor directly uh, through the process called as sublimation process. So, this particular diagram talks about pressure temperature which is normally known as phase diagram. So, phase diagram that means talks about a point that means at certain pressure and temperatures at certain pressure and temperatures we can it is possible to transfer from solid to vapor regions. So, for that region you have to go through the sublimation curve. Now, further and if you go for higher temperatures that means, we will curve, we'll, we'll go out of that means, we will bypass this triple point and uh, we will have to take the other routes that is solid to liquid to vapor. So, that way through this process we define a point called as triple point which means it is whatever thermodynamic processes are associated like melting vaporization and sublimations all the lines they merge to a point and that is called as a triple point. So, in a phase diagrams triple point is located by a very unique point and we have a critical point which is for a that is defined at on this vaporization curve. Now, melting curves has two lines one is given by the solid line other is the dotted line. There are some substances that expand during freezing and some substance that contract during freezing. So, that way we that way melting lines are uh, defined in this manner. So, this is all about to talk about different uh, points that we have uh, during a uh, phase change process. So, in this phase diagrams some uh, uh, we define the term that is triple point one important point that I need to emphasize here there are some numbers associated with this triple point for some substances like water, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, acetylene and uh, on top of that if you compare this atmospheric conditions that is normally 101.325 kilo Pascal and 298 Kelvin. Now, comparing this we will find that there are some substances that exist in uh, this thing and with respect to this atmospheric conditions water has very low value of triple point parameters. Whereas, carbon dioxide have close to uh, almost 5 times uh, atmospheric pressures and it has also temperature in the range of 216.55. So, that is way that is that means it means that through this number it is possible to predict that uh, for certain some substances it is possible we can uh, go from solid to vapor line through this sublimation curve. One such example is the uh, uh, carbon dioxide. So, normally this is used for artificial rain and we call it them as a dry ice. Again moving further some other terms that we are going to use that is compressed liquid liquid and this compressed liquid is also are uh, it is called um, subcooled liquid. So, that is defined um, not on the dome rather if if this is the dome that is critical point in a temperature entropy diagram temperature specific volume diagram then we have a point that is this is li saturated liquid saturated vapor and before this saturated liquid whatever characteristics ca um, locations are there they are called as compressed liquid region or subcooled liquid regions. And beyond this saturated vapor curve we call this as a superheated regions. And to summarize everything it is consolidated uh, in two parameters two diagrams we have steam tables which is drawn for water which you have we have already come across in our previous thermodynamics course. So, in a steam table we have how do you view the steam tables 
so we have given all kinds of theoretical backgrounds so when you uh, in a steam table there are uh, called there are called as saturated water temperature table saturated water pressure table that means if you know temperature we can get back pressure or if you know pressure we can get back temperatures so these two are interrelated property and for each case all the parameters like specific volume internal energy enthalpy and entropy can be specified now when you move on to superheated regions we require two parameters to specify this thermodynamic states one is pressure and uh, other one is temperatures so so two parameters and on top of that we can have specific volume enthalpy then also we can have entropy so this can be specified so these are these extracts that were taken from the book moran and sapiro uh, just for uh, visualization purpose another graphical representation of uh, this water uh, properties is done through a molier diagram so molier diagram is nothing but an enthalpy entropy diagrams and it's a very it is very common that justifies and in fact it is very vital uh, to find the operating points for a steam power system the next segment that we are going to introduce is the exergy and second law efficiency so exergy is the term that is used that is derived from the second law is that for any source of energy if you want to quantify the work potential for that energy then we call this as a uh, exergy so energy is available in the kinetic form it can be potential energy form it can be a heat source and corresponding work potential we can define so this particular expression says that if you have kinetic energy which is v square by 2 its corresponding exergy value or work potential we write as xke which is same as this and for potential because this kinetic energy is in the work form and potential energy is also in the work form and uh, so xrg is uh, or work potential of the potential energy is also same now for heat it is not possible so for that uh, for to find the heat uh, work potential we have to introduce the carnot cycle uh, uh, concept in of heat engines so for x heat that means work potential of heat source that can be defined by 1 minus t0 by t into q so remember here t0 stands for uh, temperature of the environment or dead state so that means xrg is defined uh, by keeping into consideration of environment into pictures so uh, if and of course if there is a mass flow we can define this xrg of mass as m into psi psi is not nothing but the specific exergy so in other words in a flow systems exergy can be defined by considering any arbitrary systems and surrounding into pictures so we can define them as this psi so based on this we can many books we can refer to find out what is the flow exergy and what is the what is non flow exergy and what is flow exergy so derivations are already there in the books but however i just need to emphasize the end expressions that we are going to use for our exergy calculations so for a closed systems like we have a fixed mass systems there is no mass interactions so entire system is defined through the exergy in terms of internal energy of arbitrary state and this internal energy for the environment or dead state so correspondingly we can have find the uh, change in the exergy for a closed systems now in a similar logic we can find the uh, flow exergy for an open system one can be so for that regions we define this d phi and d psi so d phi stands for uh, specific exergy terms associated with a closed systems and that is defined through this internal energy change then uh, specific volume change entropy change kinetic energy change potential energy change similarly for flow exergy it is defined through enthalpy change entropy change 
kinetic energy change, potential energy change. So, only difference between these two is that here internal energy is replaced with enthalpy. Now, associated with this exergy, we have this exergy principle which says that exergy of an isolated systems always decreases. So, entropy always increases whereas, exergy always decreases and in a limiting case in a reversible process it remains constant. And based on that for an actual process we can say that exergy never increases it always decreases and, uh, and when, uh, when we have this uh, when we, we say that exergy always uh, decreases means it is destroyed. So, x destroyed can be specified as T 0 times entropy generations. So, this is similar to increase in the or law of entropy it is also called as law of exergy. Law of entropy talks about increase in the entropy principle, law of exergy talks about loss in uh, destruction of exergy. And to give a physical meaning of this, if this total energy available with us and that is mainly with respect to work, heat, kinetic energy, potential energy, flow energy. So, all these things are available, but for each one there is a exergy, but out of this total energy the work potential if you actually count we will call this as exergy. Anything which is we does not have the work potential we call this as a unavailable energy. So, this is nothing but whatever energy is going to going as a waste and that is not possible to recover uh, for by any means. So, that is called as irreversibility. So, accountability of exergy will talk about irreversible nature of a process or cycle. Now, to quantify this term what we define is called as a second law efficiency. So, we all know the first law efficiency which is derived by the Carnot from the Carnot cycles. Then we are going to have but Carnot cycle uh, for that Carnot cycle we have this efficiency eta and for the second law efficiency we are give, uh, defining the same expression, but in a different way is that is the ratio of actual efficiency to the maximum possible efficiency for same operating conditions. So, maximum possible efficiency is possible when the system is completely reversible and we also take, about, take into account the uh, system and its sur associated surrounding into pictures to find the what is the maximum possible uh, reversible efficiency and that is you take this ratio and we call this as a second law efficiency. And that term can be further found out that in terms of exergy that is second law efficiency is defined by exergy re recovered divided by exergy supplied that is nothing but 1 minus exergy destroyed by exergy supplied. So, this is all about the overall concepts of thermodynamic viewpoint for the basic understandings. Now, with this uh, knowledge will be the benchmark for our analysis in the subsequent modules. So, in the subsequent module we are going to discuss about uh, steam cycle, gas turbine cycles and renewable systems. So, although this module is just a repetition but the concepts are very vital for our analysis in the subsequent models. Now, whatever we discuss so far in these lectures, let me put out some numerical problems which will be helpful for understanding uh, this thermodynamics concepts. So, the first problem talks about uh, the uh, entropy and that is the benchmark for second point for the second law analysis it tells that there is a heat source which is which is available at 537 degree centigrade and it loses 1.5 kilo joule of heat to a sink, sink means low temperature source uh, low temperature location and there are two ways it this uh, the sink is maintained. One case the sink is at 20 de 200 degree centigrade, other case sink is at 450 degree centigrade. Our job is to find out 
which is more irreversible. Now, to find the more irreversible, then we must find the what are the entropy changes are associated in both the uh, situations. Then only we can define this irreversible nature and accordingly we will say that whether a particular that heat transfer process is more irreversible or not. So, thermodynamically we say there is a source which is available at 537 degree centigrade and that is at so I say that T H uh, is equal to 537 degree centigrade which is 810 Kelvin. So, in one case there are in the first case it source rejects 1.5 kilo joule of heat to sink and this uh, sink is at 200 degree centigrade and another case same source with above temperatures it rejects to sink at maintained at 450 degree centigrade. So, this is the and here also it rejects 1.5 kilo joule of heat. So, case 2. So, here I can say T L 1 uh, as 200 degree centigrade means 473 Kelvin and T L 2 450 degree centigrade means 723 Kelvin. So, in both the cases we our main intention is to find out what is entropy change for the case 1 that is minus q by T h plus q by because heat is rejected from the source. So, entropy drops when heat is added to the sink entropy is gained. So, that is minus 1500 by T h is um, 810 plus 1500 divided by T L is 473. So, delta S 1 that is entropy change associated for the case 1 happens to be 1.32 kilo joule per Kelvin. And the second case that is delta S 2 is same expression we are using that is uh, minus 1500 by 810 but here the sink temperature is 720 degree 3 degree Kelvin. So, it is 1500 by 723. So, this number happens to be 0 0.22 kilo joule per Kelvin. So, it is seen here that delta S 1 is greater than delta S 2 which implies heat transfer for process for case 1 maybe I can write case 1 is more irreversible. So, this is how we need to quantify the irreversible nature through entropy analysis. The second problem that we are going to discuss is about same uh, irreversible nature, but through through a analysis called as exergy analysis. So, in the second problem we have a closed systems like you have a piston cylinder device that piston cylinder device initially contains a gas and in this case it is steam. So, it is a state 1 
and that state 1 steam is uh, uh, 1 mega Pascal P 1 and temperature is 300 degree centigrade. So, we say this is steam and it expands to a final state. So, in the, this is the initial state. So, when it goes to final state, so that means this piston when it expands into final state, we reach the state 2 and the state 2 is P 2 is 0 0.2 mega Pascal, T 2 is 150 degree centigrade. So, this is again in the superheated steam and this data we need to find out from the steam table. So, this problem will also give how to refer steam table, second thing it gives the concept of exergy and second law. So, to solve the problem first thing that we require is to get the property data using the steam table. So, for state 1 which is P 1 1 mega Pascal T 1 300 degree centigrade. We can refer superheated steam table So, superheated steam table will give you U 1 is equal to 2793.2 kilo joule per kg that is internal energy. Specific volume is 0 0.2579 meter cube per kg. Then entropy S 1 is equal to 7.1 one two two nine kilo joule per kg Kelvin and state two state two is defined as P one zero point two mega Pascal T one as one fifty degree centigrade and again we have to use separated steam table. So you uh, so P two so, it is P 2 T 2 and we have U 2 is equal to 2579.2579.2576.9 kilo joule per kg. V 1 is equal to uh, V 1 is uh, V 2 will be equal to 0 0.9596 meter cube per kg and S 2 is 7.2795 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Additionally, we have to take the dead state. So, dead state is outside atmosphere, outside this uh, piston cylinder device. So, de, uh, so, this dead state is defined by pressure P naught T naught and this dead straight case at this conditions we have to find the water properties or uh, um, that is uh, at invert at P is equal to or P naught 100 kilo Pascal and T naught is equal to 300 Kelvin. Then we have U 0 104.88 kilo joule per kg S0 is equal to 0 0.3674 kilo joule per kg Kelvin V0 is equal to 0 0.001 meter cube per kg. So, uh, the first thing first problem that we are going to find what is exergy. Exergy is defined as uh, exergy at initial state that is since it is a closed systems we write m times u minus u 0 plus 
u minus e 0 minus t 0 into s minus s 0 plus p 0 into b minus b 0. So, this is the general expressions. So, I, I change this to x 1. So, x 1 means we have to replace u as u 1, uh, s as s 1, b as b 1. And here we also have the mass of this steam that is 0 0.04 kg. So, we write this 0 0.04 and put this state 1 points 2793.2 minus 104.88 minus T0 is 300 into 7.1229 minus S0 0 0.3764 plus P0 101 kilo pascal B minus B0 uh, B1 is 0 0.2579 minus 0 0.001. So, entire bracket if you calculate we will say x 1 is equal to 27.5 kilo joule. Similarly, for state 2 x 2 can be calculated as 19.8 kilo joule. So, that means replace u s and v by state 2. So, uh, that means, uh, then we can answer the second part exergy change that is delta x is equal to x 1 minus x 2 that is 7.7 .7 kilo joule. Then third part exergy destroyed. So, exergy destroyed is equal to uh, delta x minus w u. Now, to calculate w u, we have to use this equation w u that is for a closed system that is q minus delta u delta u. So, w u because is equal to q, q is minus 1.5 because heat is rejected and delta u is u 2 minus u 1 that is m times m times small delta u and this, so this means w u is equal to minus 1.5 because heat is rejected minus m times is 0 0.04 delta u is u 2 minus u 1 uh, that is 2576.9 minus 2793.2. So, W u becomes so two negative quantity. So, the W u becomes 7.15 kilo joule. So, W u known. So, we can say x destroyed is equal to 7.7 .7 minus 7.15. One five, so that is zero point five five kilo joule. And last one is second law efficiency. So second law efficiency, we write by basic definition W u by x one minus x two. So this number becomes seven point one five by 7.7. .7. So, second law efficiency is equal to uh, 0 0.928. So, approximately 92.8 percent. So, it means that this particular problem gives an indications that is a uh, for the in this team there is a quite a significant amount of work potential which is not possible to extract. That, that means, still we have ability to get 
maximum work out of this, but however, the system does not allow to get it extracted. So, that means, you, you ha will have very high destruction in this particular closed systems. So, this is the indication that how you are going to calculate exergy and how it is linked to the irreversible nature of a thermodynamic process. So, with this I conclude, thank you for your attentions and best of luck. Thank you.